Okay, as promised, we are at just a minute after the top of the hour, so I figured this is a good time to get started. Uh, I just wanted to firstly welcome everybody to uh, the Machine Metrics webinar series. Uh, today's event is Data-Driven Maintenance, How to Easily Transform Your Approach to Keeping Machines Healthy. Uh, it, it's great to have you all here at the end of the summer. Hope everyone's been enjoying a nice vacation time, uh, some time out of the office. I know some of us currently are, um, you know, even those of us on uh, currently presenting. Um, uh, just a bit of background on today's presentation. Uh, of course, manufacturers like yourselves and ourselves understand that maintenance is simply just a make or break activity. Um, especially in the fast moving high competitive verticals in manufacturing and maintenance strategies of time past, such as reactive or even calendar based maintenance, um, have fallen to the wayside for some in the fast moving world of today and the advent of Industry 4.0. So manufacturers are still using these practices, um, are, are seeing um, uh, an opportunity to improve leveraging uh, real time data. So the question is, how does a manufacturer take their manufacturing organization's maintenance strategy from a state of reactivity and reactive maintenance to a state of predictive or even uh, autonomous maintenance? How does one reap the benefits of a modern maintenance strategy while avoiding the pitfalls that many do along the way? Uh, well, that's what we're going to address here in this webinar. So we have members of Machine Metrics and Upkeep, and we're going to discuss how to leverage technology to quickly transform your maintenance strategy um, from reactive to even predictive and prescriptive, uh, as well as to demonstrate the power of uh, our new combined offering between upkeep and machine metrics that enables manufacturing teams to monitor the health of equipment in real time to, uh, uh, to automatically trigger maintenance activities in your CMMS system. Um, so for those of you who've been to our events before, um, you may know me, um, but I'm going to get my screen share back on there because it just kind of screwed up. Um, my name is Graham Immerman, and I will be your host if my slides work um, today. Um, and it's great to be back with you as always. Um, you know, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, now, I'm also joined by two exciting panelists today. Uh, our first, of course, none other than our very own CEO and co-founder, Bill Beither. Uh, Bill, you can give us all a virtual uh, wave if you can. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties on Bill's side. So fortunately, we have a pre-recorded version of his presentation uh, in the event that he's unable uh, to, to gain connectivity. And of course, we're very excited to have a special guest today, Ryan Chen, who is the CEO and co-founder of Upkeep. Hi, Ryan. What's going on? Thanks for having me, Graham. Hey, it's great to have you. Um, as an agenda, um, just to roll through this really quickly, um, we're going to do a quick in introduction to machine metrics. Uh, we're going to do an introduction to upkeep, just so you guys know who we are, you know who they are. And then we're going to talk about us, machine metrics and upkeep. Uh, what can we do together? Uh, we're going to show you a brief demo, and then we're going to host a quick Q&A. We like to keep these fun, exciting, so we will not hold you here for the entirety of this hour. Uh, but before we get started, there's just a couple quick notes, uh, as always. Of course, uh, for the inevitable dozen questions that I will receive during this webinar, this webinar is being recorded. Fear not. Uh, we will send you a link in the event that you are unable to make it or you, uh, you have to leave early. Uh, we do always encourage questions. Um, and I mean that, seriously, ask them anytime. That doesn't mean that we'll respond to them in real time. So uh, you can use the chat portion, which I love to see that many of you are already using. And uh, Daniel, I agree. I'm disappointed that Ryan's not wearing the red suit today also. Uh, but uh, you can also use the Q&A section of the Zoom navigation uh, where um, you, know, you can, you can uh, put questions into the Q&A either privately, and we may answer those during the Q&A, or we may answer those in real time, depending on the question. So um, you know, other than that, uh, just a couple other quick uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, we do have another webinar coming up uh, in a little bit less than a month, uh, September 21st uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and this is uh, called Introdu Introducing Operator Triggered Workflows, where we are automating communication from the machine. And in this uh, webinar, uh, many manufacturers, uh, we found that many manufacturers inadvertently generate excessive amounts of unplanned downtime 
when they neglect inefficient communication systems. And in these scenarios, operators are often forced to trek physically across the factory floor to find the person or equipment they need to solve a problem. And that introduces huge delays and lags in production. So with Machine Metrics' new operator-triggered workflows, operators can actively improve productivity and reduce downtime. Uh, and this latest feature allows them to easily request help with specific instructions and from the right person uh, by triggering workflows within an operator dashboard that's actually right in front uh, of them at, at the machine tool. You can register now at the Machine Metrics website at machinemetrics.com slash events and learn about this new feature as well as the top five use cases that our customers are using it for. Okay, now enough about me, enough of my annoying voice. Uh, let's pass it over to the main event. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna introduce Ryan Chan. Uh, Ryan, please, uh, for those of you uh, who don't, of us that don't know much about Upkeep, tell us who you are, tell us about Upkeep, um, we're excited to learn more and I'll let you share your screen. All right. Thanks, Graham. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, I, I put this out in the chat already, but just a few um, uh, little pointers for me. I love interacting with our, our attendees and people that join live. So use the chat. Um, feel free to interact, ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, would really appreciate that uh, as well. So thank you again, Graham. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I prepared a few slides. And... Um, I'm going to do the inaugural. Can everyone see my screen? What do you What do you think, Graham? <laughs> yes. All right. Here we go. Um, thanks again for for joining everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, my goals for today is basically talk talk a little bit about shaping the next generation of maintenance. We're going to be talking about our partnership together with Machine Metrics. But before I do that, I'll quickly introduce myself. Um, my goal for today is basically inspire all of us who are here on this webinar to uh, be part of this next, be part of transforming this next generation of maintenance. Um, like I mentioned, before I get into that, I'll tell you all a little bit about myself, who I am and you know what I do. My name is Ryan, I'm the CEO and founder of Upkeep. Um, I went to Cal Berkeley as a chemical engineer. My first job was actually working at a company called Tricep Manufacturing. Um, it was a membrane manufacturing plant. We ma manufactured a thin film composite for reverse osmosis membranes used for brackish water desalination, desalination, a little bit of wastewater. And when I was working at this manufacturing plant, I noticed that our entire plant was riddled with tons of paper and pen um, and a ton of documentation that just got lost in this paper shuffle. Basically what would happen is you have equipment, you'd have um, the equipment that would go down, you would basically have someone that, that um, walks by, notices a, a, an alarm that was triggered, calls a facility manager who writes it down on a piece of paper, pencil, comes back to the office, um, who basically uh, assigns out a technician to go out and do that job. They'll write it down on a piece of paper, pencil, go back to the job site, do the repair. Um, and then basically you'd have this double, triple entry process um, that was just riddled with tons of mistakes. And when I brought it up to my management team, I asked them, hey, you know, what's going on? Why don't we use and leverage technology? I was basically told time and time again that things in this industry were the way that they were and it would take decades for anything to change because that was the status quo. A little bit about my background, started Upkeep because I noticed this, this big problem. And I basically had this belief that technology should actually make the days, jobs and lives easier for technicians. And over the past, you know, five, six years uh, and a little bit of a little bit of or let's call it like uh, a little bit of hard work and a ton of luck. Um, I ultimately got a few other people to believe in this huge shift in, in thinking as well. And ultimately, this shift in mindset from going from, you know, it take decades to actually being the enablers of this change is what got upkeep to, to where we are today. Today, we've transformed over 10,000 businesses off of paper and pen and into this digital world. And I personally feel super privileged to play a small part in transforming this industry. But ultimately, there's a long road ahead of us. And, you know, frankly, I think we have another opportunity to shift this mindset once again. Um, before I talk about, like, the future of maintenance and where it's headed and what, what our beliefs are and ultimately why we partnered with Machine Metrics, I do want us to look at where we are today. And I would say today we're divided. We're divided into different teams, different organizations within the same organization. 
You've got maintenance operations reliability all working on the same asset in parallel, but each team right now has their own lane. Maintenance focuses on an asset when it needs repairs. Operation focuses on the asset when it's currently running in just in time. But then ultimately you have reliability, which, which focuses on this long-term planning for that same asset. And this divide separates everything that we're doing for our assets in a silos and it makes all of our success disjointed and seemingly a lot less impactful. On top of that, we have data that's siloed. Right now, we have this plethora of data, and it's, it's actually kind of amazing. You have data from your IoT, your ERP, your technical data from your CMS. You have such high quality data, but right now the data is not shared across different platforms or teams. It remains you know, extremely fragmented across the different systems, and ultimately this results in unaligned perspectives across the same business. And on top of that, what we're also seeing as a, you know, right now what's going on is that every single team has different measures of success. You know, ultimately we are looking at the same asset, but we're approaching our work with unaligned goals across maintenance operations re reliability. At the end of the day, we do want to improve the bottom line as much as possible, but right now we're working independently to achieve this. And to sum it up, I'll basically say that this is not working. You know, we have divided work through three different teams. We're stuck in this cycle of being undersupported, undervalued, and misunderstood. And I, I, you know, where I started this entire presentation today was I believe that we have this power to break this cycle. And the most important thing that we can do is start shifting our mindset. And ultimately, change is going to flow from there. And so what I want us to do is focus our time across the maintenance reliability operations team on coming together as a single team. And we're gonna call this asset operations. It's this idea that again, we have one shared team, one shared goal. We, we interact with the entire life cycle of our asset where we have a single comprehensive um, data set for all equipment health metrics. And our success is ultimately the business's, business's success. And this idea behind asset operations is having one central command center, which allows an innate integrated view to focus on the optimization of your assets through the entire life cycle of it, from you know, commission to you know, basically running on the day-to-day -day operations to you know, ultimately the lifetime of the entire asset, you know, at some point decommission. And what we wanna do is really change the conversation from how many hours did you spend working to what value did, did today bring to the business um, uh, as a whole. But where we believe it all starts from is breaking down data silos, which again is why we're talking about, you know, our, our integration in, in partnership with machine metrics today. It starts with breaking down data silos and having the power to collect the highest quality data uncover the best insights, and ultimately take actions to improve your operations. And what this could look like is this continuous feedback cycle of data capture, transform, transformation, and action. And again, we're here to, today to talk about our integration and partnership with machine metrics because we believe this is an important piece of this continuous feedback cycle. We don't want your data to live in silos. We believe that it should be one team where every single, every single team is focused or works with the same exact data set and shares and is aligned to the same business outcomes and goals. And what, what I'll say here before I, I pass it over to the machine metrics team is that this next generation of maintenance is right now. Our partnership together with machine metrics, I think brings us all together as one team um, and not for a day far off in the future, but, but really today. And so what we're going to do is actually talk a little bit more about the, the, the integration and also do a product demonstration. And as you listen today, you know, as you watch today's demo, I really want us to think about how, you know, what impact it could have to both operations today and also the future of maintenance at your organization. And so ask yourself a few questions as you're watching this product demo. One, how could you make better business decisions if departments and teams within your company had one shared repository of data? And then two, if you had access to all data across all different areas of the business, do you think you would be able to solve the difficult, challenging problems that you face 
Um, and, you know, really keep these two questions in mind, um, you know, as, as you go through this product demo that the machine metrics and the upkeep team have, have prepared for you. And so with that being said, I want to thank everyone again for joining us for this live webinar today. I'm going to pass it over to Graham and Bill from the machine metrics team. We're going to talk a little bit more about the integration and our partnership and also do that product demo. Thanks. Yeah, what a great presentation, Ryan. I love, uh, you know, the concept of asset operations. You know, it's funny as a, as a, as a marketing org, we had a, you know, we had a, a workshop this morning around trying to, 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 you know, if we were to boil down some of the top pain points that exist with manufacturing, you know, do you look at it by, you know, by job title, right? Do you look at it by industry vertical? Do you look at it by, you know, by, by pain point? And what's interesting when, when you start boiling some of this down is that it, you know, it, it, it doesn't just silo itself. Some of these issues, right? They, 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 cross across multiple uh, multiple departments, multiple uh, multiple job titles, multiple uh, facilities, right? Um, so I love the concept that you put together on breaking down those silos and, and these issues with asset really affects all components of these operations for manufacturers. It's not just, you know, not just the maintenance team, right? Um, so I thought that was really cool. I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, and, and, you know, just to uh, bring things to the other side, um, you know, we do are still having some um, uh, some uh, uh, pain points on the technical side, but fortunately, um, maybe you wouldn't have noticed because I have a nice recording here of Bill's presentation. So, with that said, um, please allow me uh, to optimize my share for for uh, for sound and optimize for video and play this for you today. And Ryan, I wouldn't mind if you give me a thumbs up if it's working when it starts. Thank you, Ryan. I'm excited to be here today to, to continue to dive into how machine metrics and upkeep can work together to really drive, drive value and automate maintenance on the factory floor. So I'll start out with really sharing with you our benchmarking report that we, um, uh, that we produce on a regular basis that, that essentially com composes of data across thousands of machines. And um, you know, we're able to really tell how manufacturing, in particular in the US, is performing. And um, what we see is this number 28%. This is the average machine utilization rate um, across uh, all of our machines. It's pretty low. We're working on increasing this. Um, most people, when you ask them how their machines, uh, what their utilization rate is of their equipment, they'll often say it's 50, 60, 70%, or even more. When you actually are connecting your equipment, you'll find that it's far less. So what we've done at Machine Metrics is we've, uh, we've built an industrial data platform specifically for machines. Um, and our purpose is to improve this machine utilization rate through data that we're capturing from, from these machines. So what, uh, what we do is we've made it really easy to, to capture and transform data from discrete manufacturing equipment. And then, um, essentially transform that into a common data structure so you can run analytics. Uh, with that, um, our customers uh, can improve visibility across our factory floor through reports and dashboards. Uh, we automate workflows around the machine. Uh, we help operators uh, drive action when, um, when uh, their attention is required, uh, tie into third-party systems. Uh, we also can enable predictive analytics. So we have a data science team that's really taken the data that we've captured from machines and, um, and can preemptively determine whether there's gonna be a bearing failure, a tool issue, a, um, and other anomalies that might, might occur on the machine. And this is because we go very deep in, into uh, discrete manufacturing. So we've uh, connected to hundreds of customers, thousands of machines, uh, across uh, industries um, that uh, you would expect in discrete manufacturing, such as uh, automotive, aerospace, heavy industry, uh, medical device manufacturing. And um, from there, we've, um, we've connected to all sorts of different types of equipment, uh, from CNC machines like lathes and mills, to metal stamping machines, uh, welding machines, paint booths, routers, grinders, really you name it, any machine that, uh, that produces a part, uh, we can uh, we can really connect to either directly through the machine's PLC or through additional sensors. So 
the way that we actually connect to a machine, this process takes about 20 minutes. Uh, we have uh, an edge device, which is circled here in green. And uh, this device runs our software and uh, it, uh, it can connect to any uh, of the machines uh, like you see here. Uh, we install inside of the electrical cabinet and you can essentially use one device per machine if the machines aren't networked, or you can connect this to a network of machine to connect up to 50 machines. Uh, we'll pull data directly from the machine's control through ethernet, or as you see here, we're actually pulling data through an IO module uh, connecting to relays and a current sensor. And uh, that data is then uh, sent to the machine metrics cloud. So um, just more on the, on the edge, uh, we do support um, standard industrial protocols such as uh, Ethernet IP, OPC UA, MQTT. And um, we've also built uh, specialized machine connectors in particular for CNC machines, for welders, where these protocols might not be supported out of the box. Uh, and uh, we also support um, you know, various uh, uh, sensor platforms. Um, the, um, the data is um, you know, from known equipment, we'll actually map that data automatically so you don't have to you know, understand what those data items are. Uh, we have the database, we'll, we'll do that automatically for you. Uh, we also give you the ability through advanced scripting, scripting to transform that data and to filter it. Um, it's especially important if you're connecting to sensors that might be noisy. And um, this is a full edge platform. We actually give you the ability to, to develop your own algorithms and deploy them in a Docker con container and then actually manage that. This is, how our data science team is able to deploy unique algorithms to our customers to enable predictive analytics across, uh, across many of our customers. Um, that data is, is streamed to the machine metrics cloud, which is hosted on AWS. And we also have the ability to manage these devices. Uh, you can imagine we have thousands of these in the field. Uh, so uh, that software can be updated automatically, kept up to speed in a very secure one way up on VPN connection. So once that data is, uh, is sent to our our cloud data platform, uh, we make that available through our APIs. Um, you can query this time series data through GraphQL. But we also overlay on top of that operational data. So not only do we know machine conditions and the time series data, we understand what part numbers are being produced, what operators are on that machine, is the machine the setup? And uh, this uh, overlay really enables a many use cases that are, that are really specialized for manufacturers. And finally, uh, we have workflows that can be triggered based on alarm conditions, thresholds, performance, uh, whether a machine is down for a certain amount of time. And, uh, and this really enables um, all sorts of um, efficiency around that, ma that machine. And this is really how we've integrated with, uh, with Upkeep. So the, um, we also have out-of-the-box applications. This is really where our customers uh, see value right out of the box immediately. You can generate your own reports. We have advanced algorithms for monitoring toolware. Uh, you can install a, a dashboard across your shop floor to really um, empower your shop floor workers. You can see that data real time in a time series timeline view. And uh, uh, we'll actually even show you an operator interface as part of uh, this integration. And uh, finally, through the uh, third-party integrations where um, you know, we are able to connect to other systems, we don't believe that there's one software package that will like that will rule it all. And um, we really want to connect to other best of read applications like, like Upkeep. And uh, we'll connect to BI, to workflow software, such as CMMS, um, ERP systems, communication platforms like email and Slack. So um, what I really wanted to show, like what the, the value of connecting Upkeep and, and machine metrics is to take a manufacturer from being very reactive, machine fails, send maintenance, fix the machine, machine will fail again, to preventive maintenance, which is based on um, maintenance on, on calendar time. So every month, change of fluid, um, to usage-based maintenance, which is really difficult without data. So um, we're, we're able to pull basic usage information. Is the machine running? Is it not? And uh, allow you to go to a usage-based preventive maintenance. And where we really are starting to see the value is in this condition-based maintenance. So you know, based on alarm conditions, uh, different, you know, AI or even the operator telling us um, at uh, that there might be something that they're sensing wrong with the machine, they can initiate that uh, that workflow. We make that we make that really easy through this integration. So, um, so really, uh, let's go ahead and, and jump into a demo where I can show you all of this working. So this is our demo environment and we have uh, four machines connected here. 
uh, so a CNC lathe, uh, two CNC mills, and a stamping press. Uh, or at, um, what I wanted to really to dive into here is our workflows. So this is where the magic happens with upkeep and uh, data is, is flowed between machine metrics and, and upkeep. The, the first thing I wanted to point out is um, we have this, um, um, this metering workflow. So let me, um, let me just jump into this um, a bit here. So this metering workflow, uh, what this does, it's a scheduled trigger, which at, at 11.30 a.m. Um, every day, uh, we're actually going to, um, to trigger this webhook. Um, notice that this is Zapier. Uh, essentially, we, uh, we provide in our integration a Zapier link um, that you manage as, as a customer. And uh, this actually does the work to, um, to, to connect to upkeep. And um, we will update not only the, um, the cycles, but also the amount of uptime so that in upkeep, you can actually see the um, meter values and uh, you, can, you can see here that here's a stamping press. We have uh, a history. These are the, this is the, the number of cycles that, um, that increases um, every day. And you can see this happens uh, just about uh, every day. This is how we've configured it. And uh, from here, you can also um, create uh, workflows. So you can add a workflow trigger, which is based on uh, these cycle values. Uh, similarly, we have the um, uh, time and cycle here. Um, this is uh, basically the same thing, except this is the amount of, um, of running hours. So back to the, um, the workflows here. Let me um, back to workflows and uh, let's just keep, uh, uh, keep on, on upkeep. So what um, the other way that we um, that we'll actually trigger a work order is through a downtime event. So when the machine goes down, you can categorize that downtime as a, um, uh, so we, in this case, there's a number of different downtime categories. We can say that if that downtime is categorized as on plan maintenance, we'll go ahead and, and trigger that, uh, that integration. So there's, um, there's another example. And um, so finally, the, um, the one that, um, the one that uh, I think is really uh, powerful is uh, leveraging machine conditions. So any alarm that occurs in the machine, uh, this could also be a result of our predictive analytics and AI. Uh, in this case, it's a high temperature alarm that actually would uh, allow you to uh, trigger based on, based on that event. So there's no interaction at all required from the operator in that case. And then the, the simplest one really is this uh, manual workflow. So what you can see here is this is a um, called an upkeep manual workflow. And essentially um, when the operator manually triggers an event, in this case, it's operator requesting assistance, this uh, request will be sent to upkeep. So let's go ahead and, and, uh, and show that demo here. So in this case, the stamping machine actually is, is down at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and categorize that as unplanned maintenance. Okay, and you now, so this is, um, let's see, upkeep demo. Uh, let's see, this would be, um, I guess, 23rd, 2021, and submit that. And uh, so there is one way we can send a request. And the other one I wanted to show is this manual. So at any point in time, you can go into this workflow, and we've created this, um, this, this operator requested assistance. Um, you can put any text in here. I'll go ahead and click that. Workflow is triggered. And uh, now let's go into upkeep. So if I go into requests here, so that the, the last one didn't come in yet, but you can see unplanned maintenance. This uh, was just created a few seconds ago. We can go ahead and here and uh, approve that and actually create a workflow from it um, or reject it. And if I go back in, we should see the one I triggered manually. Um, yep. So this manual workflow is also here. So, so this is, uh, these are two ways that you can actually trigger based on operator interaction. Um, if we had that high temp alarm, you'd see that request here. Uh, and uh, as well as those meter values that, that we see continuously updating. Um, so with that, um, you can see how simple this integration is built. Uh, we just use Zapier, we'll send you a template, uh, contact us at Machine Metrics and we'll get you set up. And uh, this really will help you go from that reactive based maintenance to using data from your machines. Again, Machine Metrics is, re machine metrics is really focused in pulling data from your PLCs. Uh, we can um, just, 
briefly, you can really see the uh, the amount of data we're, we're getting just by looking at uh, our, our diagnostics here. Um, you can see um, there's a number of data items, um, probably get more of our, of, of our CNC machine. Uh, you can see where um, we have all sorts of information around the program, the, the speeds, the feeds. Uh, you can, this is used from our, our customers to build all sorts of workflows. Mostly we're focused on alarm conditions here, uh, but you can imagine, you know, if there's uh, there's many combinations that you can you can create and add the logic to uh, generate your your own maintenance work orders based on your specific requirements. So with that, thank you very much, and uh, uh, back to you, Graham. Well, that recording went better than expected. Uh, and thank you, uh, Bill, for pre-recording that for us. And, and Ryan, thank you for your presentation as well. Um, you know, we have seen uh, you know a couple of questions like trickling in, um, and I want to have the time to get to those momentarily. But I think um, you know just to like hey, hey Graham, just just for a moment here. Uh, by the way, I am here. <laughs> I don't yeah, have access yeah. signal, but I want to just uh, just uh, uh, tell everybody you know thank you for joining listening to my pre-recorded um, uh, demo that I gave, uh, but I, I, I am uh, potentially able to answer some questions uh, if you have them. And uh, again, thank you, Graham, and thank you, Ryan. Hey, that's great, Bill. And, and you know, I, I feel pretty confident that we might have been able to pull this off and no one would have even known. But with that said, um, you know, uh, a question for, for you know, our, you know, our, our panel here, right? So, you know, for in your experience, Ryan, like what have the costs been, you know, for your customers, right? Of maybe like over or under, you know, maintenance. Like, do you see like your customers experiencing significant amounts of like like additional plan downtime due to like over maintaining assets? Um, the the answer there is obviously it depends, right? Like some customers, yes, yeah, some customers, no. Um, the, I would say the biggest problem that people have, though, is they just don't know. Mm. And we don't spend much time doing PM optimization. I, I'm, again, very, I'm speaking very, very generally here. But I would say the, the average of our customers doesn't spend enough time looking at PM optimization. What we do, what, what I see most often is we have a problem in our plant. We generate a PM for it. But we never go back a year later and ask ourselves, is the PM that we generated a year before, was that effective? Am I over maintaining it? Am I under maintaining it? And I would say that's the bigger problem is that we just don't know. I don't know if you, you, know, you guys have a, a different experience uh, around PM optimization, but I would say like, it's not so much about like we're over maintaining or under maintaining on average. I would say we just don't know. Um, on yeah. Average. You know, it's funny because in my experience, like what I've seen is that, you know, most manufacturers are highly focused on, um, you know, stopping unplanned downtimes, right? Which naturally, right? Like predicting, you know, maintenance failures, right? And, um, you know, I think many manufacturers are oftentimes stuck in this like no man's land, if you will, between, you know, kind of like, um, over maintaining machines, right? Uh, and, and thus essentially experiencing high, incurring high amounts of planned downtime, right? Uh, and the under maintenance or even like a reactive, you know, when it breaks fix it maintenance, uh, which simultaneously creates a lot of unplanned downtime, right? So I think that like the value, at least in my experience of this approach um, is very much um, that when you said you don't know what you don't know, right? It's like, well, imagine if I maintained my car, right? But, you know, essentially I did it on, you know, a calendar, but last year, you know, when it was COVID and I wasn't driving it anymore, you know, was, was there still logic in, you know, maintaining that car, changing the oil, doing all these things? The answer would obviously be no, because the car didn't require those maintenance, right? Um, but, you know, if you can learn from the machine, right, all these different, um, you know, all the, you know, alarms that cause the most significant amounts of downtime, uh, the parameters at which, you know, when exceeded, uh, are most likely indicative of a downtime event, or even just simply, you know, how often the machine itself has actually been used, right? Um, and you can then leverage that data to actually trigger or even 
you know, optimize your maintenance plan over time and thus continuously improve, which I think is what all manufacturers are truly, you know, trying to do. I, Bill, I don't know if you had any other thoughts on that. If you can, if you want to bill in or if you wanted me to move on to some of the other questions. I'm going to assume that your silence is in complete agreement with my statement. And I'm going to, I'm going to mute you. Forgive me. Forgive me someday. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll readmit him here. So, okay, we've got other questions coming in. So, I want to get to these right away. Uh, somebody asked Machine Metrics this question. I'll just take them kind of as they come. You know, um, you know, what happens if a company forbids uh, plant data to exit the premises? Does, uh, you know, machine metrics and or upkeep run, uh, uh, you know, fully on-premise? Uh, I don't, I won't speak for upkeep. I'll let, I'll let Ryan answer that question for himself. But for machine metrics, uh, the answer is, you know, look, machine metrics, we are a cloud-based platform, uh, you know, primarily cloud only, but hybrid edge cloud, if you want to get more detailed, right? Uh, there is, a, when there are disconnections, from the cloud, that data can still be buffered, processed, and transformed on the edge, where you know predictive algorithms can essentially continue to function. But um, you know, we do not offer a fully on-premise solution. But we also truly believe this is not the most efficient approach for virtually any manufacturer um, from a, a data storage or even security standpoint. Uh, but that said, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you want to answer that for for, for upkeep or not. Yeah, I mean, we're we're a fully cloud um, system as well. We, we can also do like independent clouds for, for customers, if that's, if that's what they want. Um, and, and I also see a few other questions I can just go ahead and take. Uh, yeah, I mean, please, by all means. Uh, Sarah, it's, it's great to, uh, you know, see you again. Um, you, you asked a great question around PM optimization features um, within upkeep analytics. Where do we see the, the where do we see its role within asset operations? Um, so right now, the answer is actually yes. We actually have a very, very robust analytics solution within our, our existing system. And again, the big question around PM optimization was not so much like yes or no, we're doing too much or too little. It was that you, you just don't know. And you're probably doing too much on the wrong assets and doing too little on, the, you know, on, on, on others. In terms of like the, the ultimate vision within a asset operations, if we remember that life cycle of, you know, collect data, uh, gather insights, and then take action, that really is the PM optimization um, process. And I think what's going on right now is we set, we, we, we don't have the full life cycle uh, and, and continuous feedback cycle of like, we take actions, we say, okay, cool, breakdown, let's generate a PM, but we never come back to that PM you know, look at the data, whether it's effective or not, and go back into to, um, our, our PMs and redo that. We, we don't do that enough. And so it's a big, um, I, I would say, central point to this entire idea around asset operations. Um, Petros, you also asked a question around one repository. Uh, so, Sarah, hopefully that, that answers your question around PM optimization and where it fits within uh, the uh, upkeep um, analytics and asset operations. Petros, you asked one question around, you know, one repository, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's for, um, you know, production maintenance or for all activities within the company. You know, at, at the end of the day, like what I'm trying to say around one repository of data, like, I, I do believe that it spans more than just production, maintenance, operations, and reliability. Because at the end of the day, you still need to gather, you know, parts costs, you need to gather labor costs, and that does come from different systems. And so what we talk about, like one repository, it's not just that, you know, we, we need to centralize maintenance operations, reliability data into one platform. It's that we need to have a platform that can also bring in data from different systems at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we believe that's gonna be the most critical thing to having the, to gathering the best data, having the best insights and ultimately taking action off of it. And if you're, you know, let's call it like labor data comes from, comes from an ERP, you know, that's gonna be one really important metric to, to look at effectiveness of the PMs that we're doing. So um, yeah, hopefully again, that answers that question, uh, Petros. And, uh, 
you know, it kind of addresses like this one repository um, idea. It might not be just that there's one single database, but we have to have a platform that's open that enables us to combine, run reports off of different data data sets. Yeah, I, I mean, I think well, philosophically, we're in complete agreement on that. So I, I don't even know if it's worth adding to that that answer, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the simple fact is just you know. Uh, today's uh, manufacturing ecosystem is highly accelerated by solutions that can work together, right? And if you can break down those silos, uh, the data once intertwined can create a, a far more formidable and, and, and insightful digital thread, if you will, between these different systems. Um, so we, we categorically agree with that. Um, I know there's some more like specific questions uh, for you on this too, uh, but I'll, I'll like get to some of these uh, other questions from Ram, for example, uh, Ram asked, uh, 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 Amazon offers its cloud software to implement a version of AWS cloud on premise. Um, uh, my answer to that is um, that that solution from AWS is, is extremely young and in its infancy um, and doesn't necessarily provide um, uh, the majority of like the more complex features and capabilities required for solutions such as uh, machine metrics and upkeep today, uh, but a really cool idea and exciting marketing opportunity for AWS uh, to support uh, what is potentially uh, a cloud to on-premise uh, solution. Uh, you know, I'm excited for the opportunity when that matures to the point where it can actually be made uh, more available and, and not only more available, but actually more flexible and scalable and usable for more complex solutions like ours. Um, uh, the anonymous attendee asked us uh, if we only deal with CNC type systems. Uh, the, the answer to that question is no. Um, you know, for and I assume you're talking machine metrics in this instance. Uh, you know, machine metrics. You know, uh, when we initially started, we were very focused on you know machine tools. So like you know, uh, you know, uh, milling, turning, stamping, fabrication. You know, but we've really extended that to you know injection molding, cold adding. You know, lasers, axes, grinders, welders, robots, cobots. Um, you know, we have customers that have, you know, connected, you know, hundreds of manual welders to our systems, uh, you know, chillers, uh, you know, I think um, for what it's worth, though, uh, our focus is definitely exclusively on discrete manufacturing equipment. And the reason why we are so highly focused in that space is that the complexity of data is so is so immense from different types of systems that for us to be able to deliver um, use cases, um, uh, and and data and automatic data transformation from these types of systems uh, and controls that you've seen have hundreds and hundreds of data points uh, requires a vertical focus uh, to create actionable data. So you know, being able to collect and transform and make actionable data from uh, a train and a moving airplane and a baggage claim is going to be completely different than um, you know a. Well, a multi-spindle, a multi-NCU CNC machine, for example, right? And and this is one of the primary reasons for what it's worth, why we've seen many uh, data platforms and machine monitoring platforms or industrial IoT platforms fail, is that lack of vertical focus makes it highly difficult for those organizations to create uh, rapid value um, and, and also transform data in a scalable way so that data can be instantly leveraged by solutions like upkeep, right? Or, um, if you want to push that data into your ERP system or uh, other CMS or quality management system, or you know, um, you know, that's that's the type of uh, of complexity required, and why we've stayed very focused on you know discrete equipment for the time being. Um, so I hope I answered that question uh, for anonymous attendee. Um, we're getting lots of questions, so we really appreciate it. And Ryan, if there's one in there that you want to open, like uh, you know, jump on really quick, uh, by all means. Um, uh, Ricardo asked me, uh, hey, thanks for the nice words, by the way. Um, you're asking about a company taking advantage of our predictive maintenance tools and exceeding expectations. Yes, uh, I would be uh, really excited to do so, um, uh, actually, and allow me, um, you know, uh, to, to give you like an example of what that sounds like. So, you know, essentially for today, um, we have an organization that we work with, uh, uh, just a company that's allowed us to use our name, a company called BC Machining. And essentially what this, this organization was doing was they were running their machines at 200% capacity. Essentially, 
accepting that lost time and materials uh, due to tool failure was just like part of the game, right? It's just what was gonna happen, right? And so what they did was they actually enlisted the help of machine metrics uh, and our, our one of our latest um, you know, um, uh, products offerings, which is an adaptive tooling technology, um, essentially tool monitoring that uh, enables organizations to diagnose, predict, and even automatically prevent machine tool failures that can lead to broken tools, scrap parts, and costly downtime events. Now, um, as we started pulling data from these uh, BC Machinery Star, uh, you know, SR20 machines, um, uh, we pulled that data not just at a low frequency, but at a significantly higher frequency, about a thousand times, uh, you know, the standard Hertz rate um, that's, you know, often required for, you know, your just more basic um, machine monitoring use cases. Um, and and uh, our, our algorithm that was designed for this type of production was able to identify essentially the signals uh, on these machines before these catastrophic tool failures occurred. And when those failures occurred, parts made during those elevated load periods were essentially scrapped, uh, which were costing this organization uh, significant amounts of time changing out broken tools and money on scrap parts, as well as time on, you know, looking for, uh, you know, anomalous parts. So over time, uh, when this predictable pattern emerged, which indicated essentially within a 99% uh, level of, of statistical significance and accuracy, when the tooling was likely to fail, uh, we were able to um, uh, deliver um, an algorithm essentially that runs on the edge that would then not only diagnose, predict when those events were occurring, but it would actually automatically uh, place a feed hold on the machine uh, when those machine tool failures were predicted that, uh, that would lead to those broken tools, scrap parts and costly downtime. And in doing so, uh, we essentially eradicated all scrap parts uh, from this company's production. Um, and if you're interested in seeing like a far more sophisticated, uh, uh, recounting of that use case, feel free to check out our case studies at machinemetrics.com uh, slash downloads or on our YouTube page uh, where we, they'll actually talk about that. But that's just one of, of, of dozens of use cases that we're seeing for this type of technology. And But I hope that that was, um, you know, Ricardo, I hope that that was a good example for you um, uh, of, of what that looks like. Um, you know, when it comes to anonymous attendee asking who are our biggest competitors as a marketer, uh, you know, my, my trained answer is, well, of course, we have no competitors. Um, but, uh, you, know, at, at, you know, in reality, and I think Ryan might agree with this, uh, you know, the biggest competitors that we oftentimes will see are DIY IoT implementations. So, you know, more like generic uh, IoT modules or add-on modules to ERP systems, uh, you know, essentially like, um, you know, DIY IoT or more generic IoT solutions. Um, uh, you know, the problem with those, as I kind of discussed previously, is that um, manufacturers today need to accelerate the value that is created from their solutions. And, and there is a, a rapid consolidation occurring within the, the manufacturing ecosystem, right? And during this, you know, time of, you know, supply chain reconsideration, uh, it's never been more important for manufacturers to deliver on the on their products at, as high quality, as efficiently as possible, right? So DIY IoT, more generic solutions that take, you know, significant amounts of time, resources uh, to rebuild the wheel, essentially uh, are cutting it. And we're seeing a lot of organizations today uh, find, especially during COVID time, when they were, you know, essentially holding, you know, massive staffs of, you know, a dozen, two dozen developers, right, to rebuild something that already existed, that, that was not the most efficient use of their manufacturing resources. What they do best is make stuff. What manufacturers do best is make things. It tends to not be build their own, you know, proprietary software. So that's where I see the biggest competitors. But for what's worth, Ryan, I don't know if you had any things to add on that, uh, uh, you know, for you guys, but that's what we've seen, at least in the market. Um, on, on competitors, I mean, I, I, obviously you guys compete in di a different space for us. And our biggest competitors, paper and pen, and these legacy desktop systems, we know that technicians are out in the field. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what we see as kind of a dominant player in the space. And we believe that's just wrong.
<laughs> you know, ninety percent of your workforce never sits in front of a desk. Like, why are we giving them, you know, desktop-based software? Um, Ricardo, Ricardo, thanks for for attending and thanks for the the question as well. Yes, um, I couldn't agree any more on that one, Ryan. Um, and thank, thank also my cat has just arrived. For those of you excited to and noting that in the chat, so uh, thank you for that as well. Um, so uh, uh, Brian asks, uh, how much time would it take to export data from machine metrics to a plant specific data platform? Um, it can be very specific and it can be automated. You know, uh, there's a number of different ways to integrate data from systems. Ryan probably has this experience too at Upkeep. You can essentially uh, do, um, you can honestly, you can, you can use like some customers require just like a daily CSV import export. And that's more than enough, right? For certain tasks uh, required in the factory floor. Right, um, you know, others, um, you know, need like a more complex, like GraphQL driven, API driven, you know, um, um, you know, uh, connection or integration. Uh, we provide the opportunity for a number of different types of integrations, whether it be, you know, just a basic CSV import export that's automated um, and can happen essentially multiple times a day, or in, you know, the timing of you know that you like. Uh, we have, uh, you know, um, customers that are using our webhooks, similar to the approach that we've taken right now with Upkeep, where, you know, we leverage a webhook that triggers, you know, a workflow um, in Upkeep. Uh, we have more complex GraphQL APIs, uh, where we have customers building their own applications in or within machine metrics interfaces uh, that uh, coexist uh, with um, their own uh, data platforms and other systems. Um, and in doing so, uh, they're highly reducing the need for certain MES related tasks for what it's worth, uh, which is uh, something that we're going to be taking on in a, an upcoming uh, ebook called The Death of MES with a naturally provocative name. Uh, and, 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 you know, I think um, on the other side, you know, many of our customers, you know, who are finding data to be the biggest pain source for them are just easily integrating that data into you know, Tableau or Microsoft Power BI or, uh, you know, Clipfolio. And, you know, that way you can just extend that data to build your own reports and systems or connect it with other sources of data or, or even into upkeep for that type of matter. So um, I think it just really depends on your expertise and skill. Uh, but, um, you know, we make it really easy and we've documented significant amounts of pieces of this to try to make that as easy as possible. So it's as product-led and user-led as possible without having to rely on, you know, advanced system integrators and stuff like that. Because we know it's the age of the, you know, the citizen developer, if you will. Um, and we're definitely trying to help facilitate that. Um, Ryan, I hope you don't mind because there's so many questions here coming in. I'm just trying to like bang them out. But like, you know, there's a really good one. But like somebody's asking us, apparently somebody's about to add machine metrics in your future uh, of adding upkeep you know, uh, to a machine metrics environment. I mean, I think we just kind of talked about this, you know, like, listen, like, you know, when you combine the power of machine metrics, machine metrics will never be a CMMS system on its own, right? Uh, upkeep will never be a machine data platform on its own, right? When you put two powerful tools like this together, it creates a, like almost an instantaneous value proposition, which is you can transform your approach to maintenance from being just fully calendar based uh, to being driven by machine data. And like the value there, um, I think speaks for itself uh, in that, you know, you can actually use the data uh, to drive uh, your maintenance program, which is, you know, undeniably the, the, the premise of industrial IoT. And I don't know if you had any other thoughts on that, Ryan, but you know, do you Yeah, see I mean, that? it goes back to the continuous feedback cycle of collect data, gather insights, drive action. Like, you know, the, the whole premise of machine metrics and our integration together is in machine ha metrics has all of these amazing insights that you don't get elsewhere. Um, and then you combine that with this action component, which is ultimately a CMS and enterprise asset management solution like upkeep. Um, and, and then you can actually start driving, you know, optimizations uh, around your plant. And what we see so often is that you get all, of, you have so much data, you get all of these great insights but we fail to act on these. And that was kind of what we were talking about with even PM optimizations. A system and an integration like Upkeep and our machine metrics integration really enables you to have that full life cycle of collect data, drive insights, and ultimately take action and then continue that process all around. Um, you know, that's what I think the biggest, biggest value prop comes from. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree anymore. Uh, for, for those of you who are asking the question, trying to push me to name competitors, uh, you can reach out to us directly, but it's not going to happen on the webinar. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, here's a good one for you. Um, you, know, uh, you know, could you give a perspective on the different industries and from point of view of, of companies if they're embracing the stack separation and integration architecture? Um, if they're embracing the stack separation and integration architecture. So, I mean, the, the different industries, uh, I mean, I, I could give a few examples. You have like tech forward industries. Um, you know, one of my very, very close friends is over reliability at Facebook, and they have a very, very tech forward way of looking at their infrastructure. And it really is adopting this architecture of like sharing data, data sets and having a very open platform so that maintenance operations, reliability, all can utilize the same data. Um, we kind of talked about like, okay, how do you export data? Our belief is actually pushing more towards integrations, platforms and Power BI, like BI solutions, like Power BI. We think that's kind of, kind of like the infrastructure stack of the future. But what we also see is like, there are some industries that are much, much slower moving that kind of have this belief that like, you know, hey, yeah, you kind of use what you have and, you know, maybe we'll change over the next decade. But honestly, like, I, I personally believe that like this, this infrastructure stack of like platforms, BI solutions and integrations like upkeep and machine metrics is here to stay. And you, you kind of find the, the most tech forward companies, you know, even like, even like yours, uh, at NatGas and uh, where, where you're at, Ricardo, like, I believe that you guys are a very, very tech forward um, industry and company. And you guys already are adopting this type of um, integration architecture that, that I, I think is, I, I personally think is the future. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful answer. Yeah, categorically great. Wouldn't add anything to it. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see if we've got anything else here. Um, you know, we had, there was a question that was asked about your know, machine metrics tablature. Which I, I I love this question. I'm super excited about, but I don't have the answer to. Which was you know many customers are asking like, hey, like you've got this operator interface, like you know we're introducing like a tab feature which allows you to essentially like operate multiple systems within it in real time, like. Are you going to be able to like pull other systems into that? Uh, the answer to the question is yes. Uh, you know, like this makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, especially when you're like, hey, like, why would I want to have an MES terminal over there when I have you know a tablet right here in front of my operator? Or like, hey, like, I want work instructions to come up right on my tablet. Or hey, like, when I have a work order, you know, like, can't that also come up within the tablet? Um, so like, um, that's absolutely why we built out our our, our architecture that way. Um, uh, I can't tell you on this call necessarily whether or not that's going to be fully flexible and or available at this time, but I know that it's something that's uh, highly asked for and we're working on uh, and may even be available in the not too distant future. So, but uh, I don't, won't have the product team come after me by giving any uh, dates on this webinar, uh, as Ryan can obviously understand uh, if you were to do the same. Um, but listen, we're at the top of the hour. Um, we definitely went a lot longer than I expected. Uh, you guys were an amazing audience to ask tons of great questions uh, so we are elated to do uh, to be able to answer them uh, i wanted to thank ryan so much for being here i thought he gave an amazing presentation makes a great presentation partner um, if we do this again next time we're going to wear our own individually colored suits so we can avoid those questions uh, and uh, you know we're really looking forward to uh, rolling out this offering to many of you and and we're excited to continue to see the results that each company can drive uh, during your uh, digital factor transformations ryan thank you again for joining us Thanks everyone. Really appreciate it, Grant. Thanks for inviting me today. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thank you all and chat soon. Have a good rest of the day.